In today's video, I want to show you how banks really trade in the financial markets. I see a lot of people on YouTube talking about institutional trading, smart money concepts, and things like that as if they knew how institutions actually work. And the very next thing they do is to pull up a price chart. What they fail to realize is that institutional traders like bank traders, for example, don't use price charts at all. The reason why bank traders don't use price charts is because they don't care about what direction price will go next. They care about volatility. Just imagine being able to generate profits regardless of what direction price will go. This is an idea that retail traders can only dream about. In fact, those great trading systems that you see on trading forums are an attempt of doing precisely that. They don't work, of course, because you don't do that with price charts. You need the elegant mathematics of derivatives in order to profit regardless of price direction. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Before we move on, consider clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel because this helps support the ongoing creation of free videos like this one. Without further ado, let's begin with a simple demonstration of what happens on a bank trading desk. Instead of price charts, bank traders use something like this. This is called an outcome matrix. Bank traders have automatic systems for this, but we as retail traders can play around with it with an Excel spreadsheet like this one. If you're interested, please buy this spreadsheet from the original source at macroption.com. It's an extremely well-made spreadsheet, and trust me, you don't want to spend the time to build this yourself, as there is a lot of mathematics behind the curtains here. As you can see, there are a lot of parameters in here. I'm not going to cover all of this in this video, of course. If you want to learn this, you can check my ebook Volatility Trading in the video description. I just want to show you how it's possible to profit regardless of price direction with the derivatives market, more specifically, the stock options market. Bank traders do this with volatility trading, and one of the prerequisites for a volatility trading strategy is something called Delta Hedge. A lot of people believe that Delta Hedge is a strategy, but that's not true. Delta hedge is a prerequisite for a volatility trading strategy. A delta hedge can be done in different ways, but today I want to show you a way of doing that using a combination of call options and stocks. A hedge implies that a trade has two simultaneous trades. One is long and the other is short. This must be done in such a way that the delta risk is hedged, hence the name delta hedge. The delta risk is the directional risk of the market, so when we hedge the delta, we can make money regardless of price direction. Just as a side note, Delta is one of the partial derivatives of the Black-Scholes model, the famous option pricing model that won the Nobel Prize in 1997. As you can see in the outcome matrix, there are other partial derivatives of the model you need to worry about. These partial derivatives are also known as the option Greeks, but that's a subject for another video. I will begin simulating a Delta hedge by going along on 30 stock option contracts. As you can see, this is an at-the-money call option. The strike is 100, and the underlying price is also 100. This option contract is 36 days away from expiration. The current implied volatility is 25%. This generates a delta equal to 1,540. Since this is a delta hedge, we need to do something in order to neutralize it and avoid the directional risk of the market. By the way, a positive delta means that we are long which makes sense since we bought call options. One of the alternatives to neutralize the delta and create a delta hedge is to short sell the underlying stock. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. We need to know the exact number of shares to short sell in order to neutralize the portfolio delta. So we can go in the data tab in Excel. Then we go to the what if analysis option. And then we choose the go seek option. A small window with three parameters will open. The small window will allow you to know how many shares of the underlying stock you'll need to sell in order to neutralize the portfolio delta. So we're going to put the portfolio delta cell in the first row because that's the cell we want to neutralize. In the second row, we'll put the number zero because we want the portfolio delta cell to become zero. And in the third row, we're going to choose which cell we want to change in order to achieve that. In this case, we want to neutralize the delta by changing the number of stock shares to short sell. By clicking OK, Excel will start calculating how many stock shares you need to short sell in order to neutralize the portfolio delta. Notice here that now the delta is equal to zero, and we need it to short sell 1,540 shares 
of the underlying stock in order to neutralize the positive delta generated when we bought 30 call option contracts. Keep in mind that a change in any of these other variables will alter this equilibrium. Now we have created a delta hedge. This is where it starts to become interesting. Keep in mind that the delta hedge was created when the stock price is at $100. This is the anchoring point, so to speak. We want to analyze now what happens with the PL of our position as price moves away from the $100 anchoring point. Notice that our PL is zero because the market hasn't moved up or down away from the $100 anchoring point yet. Let's now imagine that some time passes by and the market rises from 100 to 105. That produces a profit equal to $1,793 in our position. The long side of our hedge is winning $9,495 and the short side of our hedge is losing $7,701. In other words, a profit is being generated because the winning side is winning more than what the losing side is losing. You might think that this is only happening because price is rising, but that's not the case. A profit will also occur if price goes down from 100. Let's go back to the anchoring position first to neutralize the PL. Watch carefully what happens with the PL when the price goes down from $100 to, let's say, $95. We begin to generate a profit of $1,877. The long side of our hedge is losing $5,825 and the short side of our hedge is winning $7,701. In other words, the winning side is winning more than what the losing side is losing. This is how bank traders profit regardless of price direction. We can see that geometrically by looking at the graph below. On the x-axis, we have the stock price, and on the y-axis, we have the P&L. We created the delta hedge at $100. If price goes up, the P&L increases. And if price goes down, the PL also increases. For the option traders, this is different than a straddle because we are looking at the position continuously. You might be wondering what's the catch here? There must be a way of losing money with this, and there is. In fact, there are a few ways of losing money with this. Remember that I said that bank traders trade volatility instead of price direction. If volatility goes down with all else maintained equal, the PL will generate a loss. For example, let's say that the implied volatility goes from 25% to 20%. The PL generates a loss of $1,880. On the other hand, if volatility rises from 25% to 30%, for example, a profit of $1,879 emerges. In other words, we are not exposed to the market direction, but we are exposed to market volatility. There are other ways of losing money here but I will leave that for another time. The point I want to make here is that if you want to make money with this, you need to know when volatility is low and when it's high. And that's a lot easier than knowing what direction price will go next. That's why bank traders use this instead of using price charts. Even though this seems more complicated than a price chart, in reality, it's easier. If you want to know how all of this works, you can get my ebook called Volatility Trading in the video description. There's also the possibility of learning how to scalp the markets using the gamma effect and the vega effect. Notice that institutional scalping is the correct way of scalping. Retail scalping like you see out there all the time is just a good way of losing all you have. With institutional scalping, you can learn how to make small profits regardless of what direction the market goes. And needless to say, this is the dream of every single retail scalper on the planet. That's it for this video. If you like the material I produce, Please help support the channel by clicking the like button, subscribing to the channel, activating the notifications button so you don't miss future uploads, sharing the video with your friend who thinks he knows how institutional trading works, and by leaving your feedback below in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next videos. Take care.